I'm just curious, how many of you want to live a healthier life using the same essential oils they used in biblical times? Today, we're going to dig deep into God's Word and learn more about what it meant when He says in Ezekiel 47, 12, And the leaf therefore for medicine. So I want to welcome you to Ancient Oils of the Bible. My name is Hannah Cragen, and I'm so excited about this class. Studying for this class really drew me closer to God and opened up my eyes to so many things that I was blinded to before. So before we begin, let me first say that we are required to tell you that these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Instead, the information presented here is shared from resources we have gathered from many well-educated individuals who believe in the body's ability to self-heal when given the right tools and for the pursuit of taking personal responsibility for our own health and of our families. The books I use to prepare this class include the Bible, of course. I use the King James Version. You are welcome to use your favorite version. And Healing Oils of the Bible by Dr. David Stewart. Dr. Stewart is a retired Methodist minister and a former university science professor. He is also a noted authority on essential oils and their healing applications. Now, there are tons of different essential oils out there, but the oils I am talking about are only Young Living Essential Oils. If you want to know more on why I choose Young Living, you can email me or check out my website, hisdesigneroils.com, and I will give you some more information. But let's pray and ask God to open up our hearts and minds that He will show Himself to us as we dig into His Word. Lord, we just come to You today and just thank You for giving us this opportunity to dig into Your Word and to learn and to... Just read and see what you have given to us, Father. Just open up our hearts and our minds and just show us what you will have to show us, Father. Just thank you for everything that you've given us, Father. Thank you for our freedom and your love and the fact that we can call upon you anytime, Lord. And just thank you for giving us another beautiful day. In your name, amen. So, some people believe that essential oils are new age, that they're just a new thing. I used to be one of them. But, the fragrance of essential oils have been around since the third day of creation in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 1, 11 through 13 And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought for a grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God said that it was good, and evening and morning were the third day. God made Adam and Eve to live in a beautiful paradise, where there were flowers and shrubs, grasses and trees. Can you imagine what it smelled like? Just imagine when you go outside, what do you smell? Fresh cut grass, honeysuckles, the rose bushes, or pine needles. All of those aromas come from essential oils of plants that are broadcasted as they communicate between each other, the animals, and even us. As science has progressed, we can now see in detail that essential oils are not just for pleasant smells, but they actually have emotional spiritual, mental, and physical healing properties. God embedded the aromatic molecules of plants not only with the power to heal us when we are ill, but to nu nu nurture and preserve our health when we are just breathing them in. What do you do when you receive a bouquet of flowers? Or when you walk by a bush of flowers? You just have to deep smell the aromas and put your face into them. Or how many of us walk outside or go on hikes and take deep breaths of the fresh air and smells and we immediately feel rejuvenated? Ezekiel 47, 12, And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth 
new fruit according to his months, because their water shall ensure it out of the sanctuary, and their fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf therefore for medicine. In Revelation 22, 2, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielding her fruit every month. And the leaves for the months were for healing of nations. We read where it says that God gave us the natural herbs, including their extracts, to be our medicine. God was the first aromatherapist long before the word and concept was articulated by humans. In Proverbs 21.20, we read, there is treasures to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. Question. Why would the possession of oil in one's house be a sign of wisdom? As we get through this study, you will see how valuable essential oils are to our bodies, and you will be able to answer that question. I'm sure many of us have read the Bible and never really paid attention to it, talking about oils. But there are 264 references to 33 different species of essential oils or aromatic oil producing plants. The word oil is mentioned 191 times in the Bible, while olive oil is specifically mentioned only 7 times, but there are 147 instances where it can be inferred. Olive oil was not only a food, but was used to burn in lamps for light and as a base for blending other oils for religious or medical purposes. Incense is mentioned 68 times in the Bible. In 54 of these, the oils of frankincense, myrrh, galbanum, and annika are indicated. In other instances, the Hebrew root translated into English was incense was Lebanon, which is actually frankincense. In only eight of the instances where incense is mentioned are the oils in the formula not identifiable. So, plants make two different types of oils, essential and fatty. Fatty, or vegetables, cannot enter the bloodstream nor cross over the blood-brain barrier. Their uses in aromatherapy are strictly to provide a neutral lipid base in which essential oils can be blended for massage or diluted when applied. The molecules of fatty oils are too large to enter a cellular level or circulate through the tissues of the body. Essential oils, on the other hand, were created to circulate in a plant to carry out its functions as a living creation. Fatty oils are manufactured in the seed, where they remain uncirculated through the life of the plant. So, we've talked about essential oils. Let's talk about how they were applied and why they work. The original healers were priests who often did their healings in temples. Today's world is just a little different. We have put our faith in science to answer all of our life's questions instead of putting our faith in God. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against doctors or science. I used to go to the doctor for every little thing. I have an uncle who is a doctor. My mom's an RN. I wanted to be a pediatrician growing up. So when I speak on this, please do not take this into the wrong context. Science has helped improve our standards of living and bringing in advances, but people have grown to expect more out of science than science can actually fulfill. Yes, there is a time and a place for emergency medicine, but when it comes to colds and flus, modern medicine has no cure, only treatments that never end. My family knows this firsthand. My daughter was practically born with an immune issue. We tried everything. We went back and forth from antibiotic to she would get sick because the antibiotic killed all the bacteria, good and bad. And then we would go back to the steroid to help her get better, which caused the issue to flare back up. It was nonstop. We did this for months and finally broke down and started using oils. And in two weeks, there was no more issues. And now at 26 months old, she has never had another flare-up. 
The U.S. Center of Disease Control and Prevention has said over the past decade, more than 2 million people are admitted to the hospital ER for adverse drug reactions from prescriptions over-the-counter medicine, and more than 100,000 people die every year in the United States from properly administered prescription drugs, and at least another 100,000 from improperly administered drugs and other medical mistakes. In July 2000, the Journal of American Medical Association attributed 250,000 deaths a year to doctors and pharmaceuticals with prescription drugs as the third leading cause of death in the U.S. And eotrogenic, which is death by doctor mistake, as the eighth leading cause. The only death by essential oils was recorded in England with only five to six instances in the last 100 years. Did you know that the word pharmaceutical comes from the Greek word pharmakian, which means to practice witchcraft, and the word pharmakon means poison? And I'm, excuse me if I said those words wrong. In Revelation 9.21, 21 8 and 22 15, we find three references to sorcerers or sorcery, all that translate from the Greek pharmaki, pharmakai. So, why do pharmaceuticals and over the counters not work? God created our bodies like we can never imagine. He placed in our bodies a hundred trillion cells, and every cell is worth 600 is worth six gigabytes. Our cells and body communicate between each other in two ways. One, by electricity through neurons, and two, by hormones, peptide, neurotransmitters, steroids, and other molecules that travel between cells and systems to carry it for messages. The portals into the cell memory are called receptor sites. Each cell has tens of thousands of receptor sites. Pharmaceuticals are specifically designed to block that specific receptor site or pass false information to trick the body into giving up symptoms. For example, antihistamines are designed to block the antihistamine receptor. So we will stop sneezing, coughing, producing mucus that comes with viral infections. When you have symptoms and your doctor prescribes you drugs, your symptoms might seem to disappear. But it hasn't. Your body was only forced to produce another set of symptoms, which sometimes can be even more severe until you have dealt with their real issues. So why are essential oils different? Because God created them to have three main parts. The first part is phenylpropanoids, which cleanse the receptor sites. Sesquiterpenes that erase incorrect information in cellular memory. And third, monoterpenes that restore God's original information into the DNA. Essential oils help our body come back into a healthy state. Please do not get me wrong. Doctor, God has placed godly doctors and other medical professionals out there who place their trust in God and that he will guide them in the direction to take. Like Luke in the Bible, as was known as Luke the beloved physician. And there are times where our body needs to be deceived by pharmaceuticals in order to survive life threatening symptoms. You are the only one with God's help who can make the right decision in those times. It's okay to use pharmaceuticals for temporary moments, but the body does need to be told the truth over time. The word doctor only occurs three times in the Bible. Luke 2, 46, Luke 5, 17, and Acts 5, 34. In the Bible, the word doctor actually means teacher. It was never indicated as a healer or a practitioner. The Bible doesn't mention much about physicians, but it was the, because it was the priesthood's responsibility for diagnosing and prescribing therapeutic regimens and the midwives who were responsible for childbirth and care of women. But the word physician 
is found 11 times and was used as a sense of a healer or a minister of oils and medicines, but it was not always flattering or commendable. When people become sick, they went to the elders of the church and asked them to pray over them and anoint them with oil. In Leviticus 14, we even see a cleansing ceremony that the priests performed using cedar wood and hyssop. The priest would take the oil and anoint the person's right ear, right thumb, and right big toe. This is where we get reflexology. In today's scientific world, we call this vitaflex and reflexology, which we have learned that the right brain controls our feelings and emotions. The upper part of the ear helps release emotional issues that you may have with your father or mother. And the right thumb is where all of our fears of the unknown are. And the right big toe is a point of clearing addictions, compulsive behavior, or bad habits. So even Vitaflex and reflexology have been around for many, many years. and is even more common today with acupuncture and raindrop. So since we do not worship in tem temples and there are not priests, who are the real priests? Well, we are. Luke 10, 1 through 9, it says that Jesus sent his followers to heal the sick. And in 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. We do not have temples like they did in Jesus' time. But according to 1 Peter 2, 5 and 1 Corinthians 6, 9, our bodies have been called the temple. So we are called to take care of our temples and embrace the responsibilities we were left with to take care of our bodies so we can serve God and others to the best of our abilities. So how do we take care, better care of our temples? According to James 5, 14 through 15, which we have read the first part, it said in the verse 15, it says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sin, thou shalt forgive him. The word anointing is mentioned 156 times in the Bible. During those times, they would take vials of oil and pour it over their heads. And this was not just a drop. In Psalms 132, it says they anointed Aaron with precious ointment upon his head which it ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. This is so much oil that it ran down his beard. And this was no Doug Dynasty beard. This beard ran down to the collar of his robe. So how do we know that it was not just olive oil? Because it says precious oils. Olive oil was never called precious. But this does apply to essential oils like cassia, hyssop, frankincense, spikner, galbanum, myrrh, onica, cinnamon, and calamus. Olive oil, or another vegetable oil, might have been used as a base to mix all of the oils together, but never used as an anointing. During Bible times, anointing meant to pour over the body the head, to cover, rub, or smear over body. And the Hebrew word for anoint is masak, which in English means massage. Luke 7, 36 through 50 and John 12, 1 through 8 shows us women who anointed Jesus' feet with oil and kissed them. Today, we have a more modern massage, which has a protocol of applying oils for healing and wellness called the raindrop technique. Now, every time before I perform a rain job, I always ask God to use me in His will. And as I am facilitating the rain job, I am constantly praying that God will use these oils in the way He wants them to be used. God even gave Moses a recipe for a holy anointing oil. In Exodus 30, 23-25, it says, Take thou also unto thee, principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekel, and of free, sweet cinnamon, 
half so much, even 250 shekel, and sweet calamus 250 shekel, and of cassia 500 shekel, and after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of all of olive and him, and thou shalt make it an oil of an holy anointment, an anointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be a holy anointing oil. God did give Moses instructions for the holy anointing oil in Exodus thirty twenty six through 31, where it says, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy anointment, an anointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be a holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith in the art of of the testimony, and the table and of his vessels, and the candlesticks in its vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the labor of his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be the holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Now that we know what essential oils are and how they work, let's read passages that show how essential oils help support us on a deeper level. Psalms 45, 7 through 8 says, Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and alloys and cassia out of the ivory places. Thereby they made thee glad. Proverbs 27, 9 ointment and perfume rejoice the heart so does the sweetness of man's friend by hearty counsel isaiah 61 3 to appoint unto them that mount in zion to give unto them beauty for that ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Hebrews 1 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness among above thy fellows. What do all these verses have in common? They all deal with the oil of joy or gladness and how oils rejoice the heart. How can essential oils alter our moods? Our four senses of touch, taste, sight, and hearing are directly connected with the rational part of our cerebral cortex, which means we can think and reason un unemotionally when we touch, taste, see, or hear. We can choose to get emotional later if we want, but we have that choice. Well, smell is a little different. Our noses are wired to the brain backwards. So that means smell travels in reverse, so it reaches the emotions first and then passes to the rational brain later. How many of us walk into the kitchen and smell something cooking that reminds us of grandma or mom? Or walk into somewhere we have never been before, but you smell a cologne that reminds you of a memory? Well, essential oils are the same way. The olfactory nerve connects directly behind the nose to the center of the brain, which is the coordinator for our emotions. The emotional brain does not react to words that are read, spoken, heard, or even felt by braille. It only responds to smell. The, center, the central brain is like a librarian that files and catalogs our emotional memories and our body is the library. So as we experience something, our brain fouls it somewhere in our body. Our body stores the good and the bad memories. If you have a memory, whether good or bad, that you have faced, accepted, and dealt with, it is stored in, as intellectual memories. These memories can be stored without cause 
of pain, making us sick, or trying to control us. The memories that we have not faced, accepted, nor dealt with are stored as repressed emotional energy, waiting for the time that you can deal with them. These emotions keep reminding us of them through negative ways. They can cause pain, illness, disease, and problems on a physical, mental, social, emotional, and spiritual level. God can use essential oils to help us reach those emotions, be able to deal with them and unblock them so that we can have better health and happiness. So today, we have the essential oil joy. Joy contains rosewood, which has a frequency of 320 MHz, which is the highest, second highest frequency, frequency of any known substance. Joy has been found to be a mood elevating. Also, when inhaled, it brings back memories of being loved, being held, sharing loving times, and helps open up the blockage in our lives that we may have shut down to love, whether it's loving ourselves or others. When there is grief, the adrenals and the adenoid glands shut down, and joy helps open them back up. We read earlier about the holy anointing oils in Exodus. Well, Young Living has a blend similar to that called Exodus 2 and 3 Wise Men. Exodus 2 contains cassia, hyssop, frankincense, spikner, galbanol, myrrh, cinnamon, and calamus. Exodus 2 is great for supporting the immune system. And Exodus and 3 Wise Men promote feelings of reverence, spiritual awareness. This blend contains sandalwood, juniper, frankincense, spruce, and myrrh. Now, John 19, 38-39, And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about a hundred pound weight. Alloys or sandalwood were Jesus' burials. And back then, 75 to 100 pounds of alloys and myrrh would have been worth about 150,000 to 200,000 in today's world. The value of these spices demonstrate two things. One, the wealth of Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea was amazing. And two, the respect and love they had for the Lord must have been so great. Sandalwood is 90% sesquiterpenes, which gives its powerful abilities to deprogram miswritten DNA. In the ancient days, it was used as the head, used on the head with prayer for negative childhood reprogramming to be released. It is also grounding and stabilizing, which is great for emotional balance. Sandalwood also can be used to support the nervous, immune, digestive systems, and healthy skin along with the muscles and bones. Cassia and cinnamon are two oils that are in God's holy anointing oil that we read about earlier. Other scriptures that contain these oils is Psalms 45, 8, which reads, All the garments smell of myrrh and cassia and alloys out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. These two oils both smell like cinnamon, but they are chemically and physically very different. These oils are warmer, so you may want to use a carrier oil, like olive or coconut oil, to slow the penetration and not get them in your eyes. Cassia is mentioned in one of the oldest known medical records called the Ebers Papyrus, which is a 16th century BC record of 877 Egyptian prescriptions and recipes. They are both great for support of the immune and digestive system. Cedarwood was an oil used for embalming for ritual purposes and other medical purposes. In Leviticus 14, you can read of a cleansing ritual for where cedar wood and hyssop 
were used and applied to the VitaFlex points that we talked about earlier. Cedarwood is also great for keeping bugs away. Some of us have cedar closets or chests where they repel moths and help preserve what is in them. King Solomon built his temple and palace out of the cedars of Lebanon. North American Indians used cedarwood to enhance their spiritual communication. Cedarwood oil contains the highest concentration of sesquiterpenes, which help oxygenate the brain and support clear thinking. It also helps support the nervous and respiratory system and stimulates the limbic region of the brain or the center of our emotions, which brings emotional balance. And it stimulates the pineal glands, which release melatonin. Cypress was used anciently for its benefits to the urinary system, cardiovascular, immune, and respiratory systems, and for healthy muscles and bones. The Phoenicians and Cretans used Cypress for building ships and bows, and the doors at St. Peter's Basilica at the Vivican lasted 1,000 years, and they were made from Cypress. Also, Cypress is 77% monoterpenes, which reprogram cellular memory, which correct information. Exodus 30, 34 through 36. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto the sweet spices, stack and onica, galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempted, tempered together pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, where it will be met with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. Galbanum has an earthly, parsley-like smell. It is mentioned in the Egyptian papyri, which and was anciently used for embalming and incense. The aromatic smell helps bring harmony and balance and amplifies spiritual awareness and meditation. When galbanum is combined with frankincense and sandalwood, it can raise your frequency dramatically. Galbanum also supports the immune, digestive, and nervous system, as well as your skin. Stack, or which is another stack, which is another name for myrrh, is the only oil that is in both ingredients in the holy anointing oil and the holy incense. Why would God mandate myrrh in both formulas? Myrrh is the most commonly used fixing oil in the ancient times. Fixing oils are combined with other fragrances to make them long-lasting. Myrrh is one of the best oils in the world for this purpose. One can say that it appears that God was knowledgeable in aromatherapy and the science of creating blends with lasting fragrances. On the other hand, God is omnipotent, knowing everything including all about aromatherapy god is the source of all wisdom man merely rediscovered truth created by god this is why we say god was the first aromatherapist myrrh excuse me myrrh is the first oil mentioned in the bible in genesis 37 25 most of us know the story of joseph and his brothers well, instead of killing him, they sold him to a caravan, and that caravan was carrying balm and myrrh. When we went back, when they went back to buy food, they brought balm and myrrh as gifts. Another story is Esther two twenty two twelve, which says, "Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Assyrius." Excuse me. After that, she had begun twelve months according to the manner of the women. For so were the days of their purification accomplished to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Esther used myrrh and other oils for six months to prepare for her marriage to the king. 
We also read where they offered murdered Jesus when he arrived at Golgotha to be crucified, but he did not accept it. Mark fifteen twenty three, and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. Myrrh is not only the first oil mentioned in the Bible, but also the last in Revelation eighteen thirteen. And not only was it the last mentioned, mentioned, but it was also the last oil received by Christ, first at his birth and then at the cross. Myrrh is mentioned 156 times in the Bible. I'm sorry. Um, it has the effect of provoking feelings of security. And well-being. Pregnant women use myrrh for protection against diseases and to elevate feelings of well-being. They also believe it was protect their unborn babies from generational curses. Myrrh was also brought to Mary and baby Jesus from the wise men. Myrrh is supportive of the immune and nervous system as well as hormonal balance and skin. Another oil we are familiar with is frankincense which was called the universal cure-all according to the Egyptians. Numbers 16, 46 through 50, we read, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take this censer and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense and go quickly into the congregation, and make an anointment for them. And there is wrath gone out of the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague had stayed. Now they that died in the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred, beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned to Moses and to the door of the tabernacle, and the congregation in the plague was stayed. The incense used by Aaron was the holy incense of Exodus 30, 34 through 26. Fumigation was one of the ways the, pe the biblical people made use of essential oils. Today, we diffuse them. Isaiah 63 and 6, it says, And the Gentiles shall come to the light, and kings to the brightness of their rising. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Epha, all they shall Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall shew forth the praises of the Lord. The English word incense is translated in the passage to the Hebrew word Lebanon, which is frankincense. Matthew two eleven, and they and and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense was more valuable than gold, and only those with great wealth and abundance possessed this oil. So you can imagine how Mary and Joseph felt when the wise men brought this to baby Jesus. Frankincense supports the immune and nervous system, as well as bringing emotional balance. It also increases spiritual awareness, promotes meditation, and improves attitude and uplifting spirits. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house into the morning. This passage tells us where Moses asked the elders of Israel to sacrifice a lamb and use a branch of hyssop to apply blood of the lamb to their home doorpost. This is what we know as the first Passover, where the spirit of death was going to pass through Egypt that night and kill all the firstborn sons of every family, and those that had the lamb's blood on the doorpost would be spared. This is just like us Christians. We have the blood of Christ shed for our sins, and we are spared. 
the Hebrews also believed that the sin of hyssop would repel evil spirits. And because God said to strike the lintel and doorposts, that would have bruised the leaves of hyssop and released the scents of its oils. Psalms 51 7 says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. The fragrance of hyssop was considered to be spiritually purifying and an aid in cleansing oneself from sin, immortal, immortality, evil thoughts, or bad habits. Why would the psalmist say, Purge me with hyssop? Psalms 51 1 through 4 reads, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitudes of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thou only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. If your Bible is like mine, in the prelude part before the chapter, it says, To the chief music musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone to Bathsheba. David had committed adultery and murder, and seemed to have no conscience about it. Then Nathan came and opened his eyes to the gravity of his transgression. This psalm was written during David's first grief in his realization of the magnitude of his terrible action. His bull has scientific basis to purge oneself of iniquity. Hyssop is about 50% ketones, which acts like phenols and cleanse receptor sites. It also contains 5-10% to sesquiterpenes that delete added addictions, compulsions, and, un and other ungodly directions directives from the DNA. With 20 to 30 percent monoterpenes, it can reprogram the DNA and restore it to God's image. So his will directed our sincere directed with our sincere intent to create a clean heart and restore a right spirit within ourselves can blot out our transgressions and ease the sinful tendencies stored in cellular memory thus releasing and cleansing the root cause of wrong action. Now there was a set of vessels full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it in his mouth. John nineteen twenty nine. This is a time where Jesus realized that his trial on the cross was nearly accomplished. In my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Jesus was thirsty, so they responded by dipping a sponge into some vinegar or sour wine and extended it to Jesus' mouth on a branch of hyssop. We are not sure why they would use a branch of hyssop or why it was even at the crucifixion site. We do know that hyssop is used for respiratory relief, and since crucifixion is a slow suffocation, maybe it was used to help make breathing a little easier. We do not know, we do know that Jesus refused the sour wine and the myrrh offered just before he was nailed on the cross. As his role as the, as the lamb being slain for the sins of the world and for suffering for mankind was not to be mitigated by any man given relief. There's another interpretation for the presence of hyssop being at the crucifixion. As we talked about being, as we talked about before, when the spirit of death came a smote to smote the firstborn sons, God asked them to slaughter an unblemished lamb, and dip a branch of hyssop in the blood, and strike the lintel and side posts of their doorways as a sign of the angels of death to pass over the dwelling, sparing the sons of Israel. When God rescinded the covenant for Israel's long series of misdeeds in Jeremiah 3, he promised to make a new covenant to be written in their hearts. 
At the Last Supper, Jesus offered his disciples a new covenant to his blood in his blood. When the hyssop branch was raised up to Jesus on the cross, it was dipped in his blood as the Lamb of God. This act showed a new covenant was formed for all future generations. In Egypt, in Egypt the instructions were to strike the horizontal lintels and the vertical side posts of the hyssop branch. At Calvary, the lintels and the doorposts were placed with vertical and horizontal beams of the cross. This symbology of God's promise is that in the Passover was repeated at the death of Jesus at the cross. Hyssop is in the mint family, which is the same family of oils mostly used in the anointing technique called the raindrop technique. In raindrop, oregano, thyme, marjoram, basil, and peppermint are used and relate to hyssop. Hyssop supports the cardiovascular, nervous, and respiratory system, while the aromatic influence stimulates creativity, meditation, and promotes uh, centering. The next one we'll talk about is myrtle. Esther 2.7 says, And he brought up Hadessa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mor Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took him his own daughter. Esther's name in the passage is Hadessa, which is Hebrew for myrtle. During the years of preparation to become the king's bride, Myrtle, her namesake, was probably among the perfumes and odors applied. Dr. Daniel Pinole of France has found that myrtle helps support hormonal imbalance and soothes the respiratory system. And as a new wife, we know how important it is to have a balanced hormone and endocrine system so that we can become mothers. Myrtle also helps support the digestive system and respiratory system, as well as help have healthy muscles and bones. The aromatic influences are elevating and euphoric. Another holy incense oil is Otico. In Exodus 30-34, Otico is the heaviest of all oils. It also smells like vanilla. Annika was known for its speed in helping support the body. It has different names, including Friar's Balm, Benzoin, and Java Frankincense. Annika helps support the cardiovascular system, emotional balance, and promotes healthy skin. The aromatic influences of Annika are warming and soothing to the heart. It may help one overcome sadness, loneliness, and other emotional issues. The Rose of Sharon, or in the Bible, was Cistus Lenifer, also known as Rock Rose, Cistus, Latinum, and Labdanum. This rose is not what we would have in our front yard, but this rose has a soft, honey-like scent, as well as an aromatic gum that exudes the plant. I love this verse in Psalm, in Psalm 2.1. I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. Cystus, or the Rose of Sharon, helps support the immune system. The aromatic influence helps stimulate the sense of touch, feeling, sight, and sound. It affects the upper part of the brain, which may also help quiet the nerves and elevate the emotions in meditation. Now, the last oil we're going to cover is spignard. Spicknard was one of the last oils received by Jesus before his arrest in Jerusalem. Do you remember the women who coming to one of Jesus' last meals and anointing him with a precious ointment? Was he anointed on his head or on his feet? And who was the woman? Let's read some passages to find out. Matthew 20, 26, 6, and 7. Now when Jesus was in Bethlehem, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head, and he sat at meat. 
And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet in ointment, and anointed them with the ointment. And being in Bethlehem, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him the supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the door of ointment. We see that there are three instances where Jesus was anointed with spikenard. One, two days before the Passover in the house of Simon the leper, where he was anointed on his head. Another in the house of Lazarus, six days before the Passover, where the oil was poured over his feet, and a third anointing earlier in his ministry. Spikner was very valuable precious oil. It, was a, it has a petty, earthly, animal-like fragrance, reminiscent of goats. It is great for support of emotional balance and skin health, and it's balancing, soothing, and harmonizing. The amount of oil used was about one litre, which in today's currency is about $2,000 of oil. Could you imagine using $2,000 worth of oil on someone's feet or head? In those days, this is about how much a common laborer made in a year. So these women saved up for these special moments. The use of Spigner and Murray in the last weeks of Jesus' life have some implications that are interesting. In John 12, 4 through 7, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of Spigner, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the door of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas, Is Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear that was put therein. Then Jesus said, Let her let her alone. Against the day of my bearing has she kept this. Jesus was anointed by Mary, the, the sister of Lazarus. Judas objective. Judas objects to such vile commodity being used to anoint Jesus' feet when it could have been sold for substantial amount and distributed to the poor. Jesus' response to Judas was to just leave her alone. She bought it for the day of my burial. Myrrh was a customary burial, but Spickner was not. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus knew he was about to receive brutal flogging, and he knew his body would be covered with deep cuts and bruises, in addition to the penetrating wounds of the cross. He also knew that an amazing miracle was going to take place during the burial. Besides the scars on his hands, feet, and side, his injuries would all be healed without a trace. Jesus' healing and resurrection was an act of God and not the result of any oils applied just before or after his birth. But it is interesting that the oils Jesus received twice in this last week of his life are precisely what was chosen to treat wounds. Jesus comments to Judas, was as if he was affirming that a 
appropriateness of these essential oils from which his body could well benefit these events. Mark 6, 7, and 10 through 13. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart hence, shake off the dust into, under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, It shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the days of judgment than that city. And they went out and preached that men were repent. As they cast out many devils and anointed them with oil, many that were sick and healed them. There are four points I want to make before we end. And these are just for you to think about and pray about. The first point is Mark 10 and 11. Gives, Jesus gives advice on what to do when we find relatives and friends who are sick and can benefit from essentials, but who are unreceptive and perhaps critical of what we may offer them out of concern and good faith. Jesus says forget them and move on. Don't waste your time. Find people who are receptive and ready and administer to them. The same advice is in, given in Luke 10, 1 through 12. Because they're out there. We all know people who are like, just try it. Just see how God can use them. But unless they are ready, unless they have open hearts, you're only going to push them away. We cannot make someone saved. And we cannot make someone use essential oils. The second part, the second point I want to make is um, Mark 6, 12, where it says, tells us that healing has to be accompanied with repentance. I will let you dig deeper into that, because um, that could be a class all of its own. But um, Mark 6, 13 says, mentions casting out demons and devils and you might not believe in devils but in ephesians six twelve, paul says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of the world against spiritual wickedness in high places and lastly number four goes back to mark 13 where it says that the disciples anointed him, anointed with oil, many that were sick and healed. Those of us who use these oils and teach others how to use them, and who practice frame chop technique and other methods of anointing, just know that we are carrying out the work of Christ as taught, in his, taught to his disciples, and as expressed in the passage of Mark. It's okay if they tell you no. It's okay if they reject you. It took my family two years before we even tried them. And now they have helped me personally so much, physically, mentally, spiritually, that I'm not the same person I was a year ago. James 5, 14 through 16. We will go right back to it. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with an oil in the name of the Lord. It is our hope that the art and practice of healing will return to the church, as expressed in James, and that it is practiced by Christ's disciples in the early Christian church. It is for those reasons why we teach ancient oils of the Bible and why we teach other essential oils class. This is not some gimmick. It is not some new age. These are oils from the Bible that he created that are all around us, that are pure, that he made for us to use daily. Well, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, you can find me on Facebook at His Designer Oils. 
or you can go to my website and find out more information. My name is Hannah Cragen. You can look me up on Facebook if you need to. But I hope you learned something, and I hope God touched you and opened your eyes like he did mine. So thank you.